Okay, the ESR test stands for Erythrocyte Sedimentation Rate. It, it is a non-specific test, and what that means is it's not specific as to um, where the inflammation is, and that's what the ESR is looking at. It's looking to tell us basically um, if there is inflammation or if there is not inflammation. Um, but it's non-specific. It's, it's not going to tell us where that inflammation is, if there is inflammation, um, but it will give us an elevated, elevated result. Um, first off, let's, let's understand what we're talking about here. Um, in a retrocyte sedimentation rate, what it would, what it would kind of look like here is um, we draw some blood, it would be mixed up in some type of saline solution. It would go into a test tube, and, and as you probably know, a erythrocyte means red blood cells, so it would be looking at um, how fast, or in some cases how slow, uh, the, the rate at which these red blood cells will descend. Um, there, there are things that can affect uh, the rate of which these descend. Um, in a lot of autoimmune diseases, you tend to um, get a buildup of protein, which gets on the red blood cells, um, which causes them to, to descend faster. Um, but there's, there's a number of reasons um, that, that this, this idea here can be affected. Um, if we look at the body here, and, and just to kind of get an idea of some of the reasons that we might have inflammation, um, but let's let's start, you know, at the top and work our way down. Um, well, actually, first off, what I want to start with, just because it's it's fresh on my mind here, is um, autoimmune disorders um, are going to cause inflammation. So there's there's tons of autoimmune disorders that can give you an elevated ESR result. Um, if, if you think of, uh, let me try to draw this, this is supposed to be a kidney, looks more like an ear to me, but, uh, <laughs> um, when you think of, uh, kidney problems, um, and, and you think of renal failure, you, you usually end up with something called nephritis, um, and obviously, um, the itis means it's inflammation of the nephrons in the kidney, so that would be a reason you would have inflammation in the body. Um, let, let's say you step on a tack or you step on a nail and you, you, get, you get some inflammation in your foot. Um, let's say you get gout in your, in your great toe, which is where it's commonly seen. Um, that could cause inflammation. Um, a lot of malignant diseases will cause inflammation. Almost any bacterial uh, type of infection, um, whether it be an abdominal infection, um, what else can I think of? Uh, like um, pelvic inflammatory disease, uh, syphilis, pneumonia, all of those will cause inflammation, will give you an elevated ESR. Um, I, I kind of talked about uh, the autoimmune dis diseases. Um, I don't know if I mentioned any of them, but um, just off the top of my head, um, rheumatoid arthritis is one that I that I think of right away. And the other one I think of is is lupus, uh, specifically um, systemic lupus. Um, but there there are other reasons for inflammation too. Um, I think you're probably getting the idea by now that um, that you know it, it is non-specific and and it doesn't tell us. Um, where the inflammation is. It's just telling us yes or no to if there is inflammation. The other thing I want to mention too, um, with severe anemias, um, you may have an altered ESR result. Um, and an example of that would be like an iron deficiency or a B12 deficiency type of anemia. Um, with, with lower red blood cell volumes, the red blood cells um, settle faster than in blood containing normal red blood cell value. So um, that's something to think of too if you ever see an uh, ESR result that comes back comes back um, decreased. Um, so I think that at least gives you some examples of it. Um, some of the normal values here for uh, an ESR test, um, and let's see if I can even remember these. Um, I just had a ESR that came back the other day, so I, maybe I can remember what was on there, but um, I know it's different um, for oops for uh, males versus females, um, and I think it's actually uh, even different for a child and a newborn. Um, but males, it's up to 15, and it's measured in millimeters per hour. Um, in females, it can be up to 20. Um, 
so I, I should really say uh, 15 or or less in 20 or less um, a child I believe is up to 10 so 10 or less and a newborn I want to say it's either two or three um, or less somewhere around there uh, let's just say two two or less and remember that's millimeters per hour that we're measuring it in that didn't start all very well um, so well whatever but um, uh, usually usually on the lab report that it comes back on it's going to give you the normal values anyway um, and and if not of course you can always reference uh, a lab book and take a look on that to see if you're within the the normal range or not um, so hopefully that gives you somewhat of an idea but like I said uh, the main thing with a ESR test is that it is non-specific